Hey guys, how you doing? It's great to hang out with you again on another Monday afternoon for me anyways, afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And if this is your first time here, we'd love to have you join us every week where we just talk about the latest updates and things happening in the online video industry and what it means for us as creators as we're growing audiences, growing businesses to stay on top of everything that's happening. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some things here today related to money. But for those of you who are watching the replay, what you can do is to click that bell icon down there below next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever we go live. And you can join us here and the hundreds of other creators who are here hanging out here in the chat. Good to see you guys who are already here. I see um, ASIC, Brovids, is that how you say that? Meteor Show, Matt Elite Storm. Uh, Marque Marquee Sound, Random Outdoors, Gum Joe, Sam Stunts, Outlaw Generation. Good to see all of you guys. So we got a great conversation. I'm going to do something here a little bit differently um, today. I want to introduce you to some friends of mine who are going to be here to talk through this topic with me. But before we dive in, for those of you who are watching the replay, you can, one of the things I like to do is watch it on double speed. So you can, if you're on desktop or mobile, you can increase the playback speed and kind of get through the content a little bit more quickly um, and, and do it that way. And, uh, and then we're going to record this and it'll go on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can catch up with them uh, as well there in the future in case you happen to miss one of our one of our live streams love to have you join us cool so let me introduce you to some people here before we get started and uh, this is this is uh, I'll let you guys introduce yourself real quick before actually let's do that during the podcast recording so so that I get those get that too but for those of you guys who are in the live stream you guys know the way this works um, we are going to uh, talk about some stuff just together um, me and Jason and, and Carl and then we are going to dig into your questions and help you guys you know answer the things that you're thinking about this as well so I'm gonna hit the podcast record we record for a little bit and then we're gonna answer your questions but before we get started, this is Jason directly next to me. His name is Jason, like I said, <laughs> and um, he owns Social Blade. And we'll let them introduce themselves to you guys a little bit here in a second. But there's Carl. It, it says at Carl and Ginger, but it's just Carl here, not Ginger. Uh, <laughs> so um, they have awesome channels, which I'll tell you about in a second. But the three of us are going to jump into this. So you guys ready? Ready. Here we go. Hello creators, how are you guys? It's great to hang out with you again for another Video Creators Podcast episode like we do every Tuesday here in iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. We're probably there and we appreciate you listening. We've got something great to talk with you guys about today as far as like those of you who are wondering as creators, where can I make the most money? Where is the most lucrative place for me to go? Is it to Amazon? Is it to Twitch? Is it to YouTube? Is it to Facebook? Is it to some other platform that's doing something completely different. And we're gonna be talking about a lot of different platforms today. And I have two guests with me that will be walk, talking through this uh, this topic with me here today as well. And I introduce them to you here in a second. But first of all, before I do that, I just wanna give a, a huge shout out and a thank you to this episode sponsor, which is Rev.com. If you guys are familiar with them, they do all your captions for a dollar a minute, super quick and easy. So go check them out at Rev.com slash video creators. So let me introduce you guys to Jason and to Carl. So hey guys, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Doing yeah. great. Awesome. So Jason, why don't you go first? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what we need to know about you and what you do on YouTube and and, uh, and your connection and all this. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm Jason, aka Ergo. I've been on the YouTube platform since 2007, uh, both on my own personal channel and now uh, with uh, a family vlogging channel, Art Twin Life, and sort of my claim to fame in the space is I'm also the founder of SocialBlade.com, which is a website that, uh, among other things, tracks YouTube statistics, and yeah, uh, basically pretty much everyone in the YouTube community, it seems, uh, uses the website to track their stats as well as other people's stats. Yeah, awesome. Great to have you here. And Carl, tell Thank us you. about how you got started on YouTube and what you guys do today there. Uh, we got started clear back in 2009. In fact, all three of us met and kind of became friends at the VidCon number two, the second VidCon ever. This was before video creators existed. This was before Social Blade was a thing. Back when the YouTube partner program to get paid on YouTube, you had to like 
actually fill out a form and submit it and wait for the email to come back like three and, months later. And even then it was more about who you knew at YouTube than it was about the form. But yeah, <laughs> That's and, right, and but you guys had a different ch family vlogging channel back then too. Man, times we've have never stopped. Yeah, we're, we reinvent ourselves whenever the need requires. We just try to adapt and evolve. And uh, we've been full time for three years now, going on three years full time on YouTube. Uh, but we use all the platforms and try to do a little bit of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what would we expect on your channel now? It's changed over time, but. Oh, uh, we do a lot of trend based content wrapped in a family vlog. So we take a, a family and we do all kinds of crazy fun stuff with toys. Right now, one of the big hot things on our channel is a lot of RC car stuff. So we do a lot of remote control, like high end remote control car stunts and tricks and stuff with the swimming pool. Um, just a lot of fun family content. We try to upload every day, but we have like, four channels as a family that we upload to. So Woo. almost every day we're uploading somewhere. Wow. Yeah. My gosh. Cool. I would love that. Not today, but sometime, um, I'm just getting an echo from somewhere, but, uh, it might be me. Let me put some headphones in here. Okay. Give me one second. I'll grab some headphones. Keep going. I'll All be right. right back. It would be great to, um, talk more about like reinventing yourself. Cause that's like something a lot of creators miss and something I'm kind of in the middle of right now. Um, and if you're video creators, just moving away from like some of the educational style of stuff, like click here, click there, type of tutorials and nine ways to do this and whatever. And that stuff's great. There's a lot of other people doing a great job with that too. So I'm kind of ready, like what's my next big thing? And I'm moving more towards narrative based educational content, which I'm really excited about. Um, I've been working hard on this and I think it's going to be awesome. So, uh, but that's another topic for another time, but uh, I, re I, am, I am really excited to do that. So, well, thank you, Jason and Carl, for being here. So, what you guys know is one of the things I like to do is just keep up to date with what's happening in the online video industry. And, and not just YouTube, but although that's certainly a big part of it for us, obviously, but YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Amazon, Twitch, there's like so many big players now. And, they, and for a lot of us, we're using many of them as different tools in kind of our tool belt for how we reach people, grow a community online, build a business, and ultimately spread a message that can impact people's lives. And uh, so I have some data here. It's a more recent article. I don't know why. The data is actually from 2016, but the articles and the reporting of it have been just like popping up lately in the different news publications I follow. We're going to look at the one from Business Insider, and there's a link to it in the show notes that you guys can check out. The title is YouTube is the most lucrative platform for creators creators with Etsy and Instagram trailing behind. And so um, let me uh, kind of switch over to that for people who are watching the live stream of this. Those, that's, the, that's, the, that's the chart right there. So as of 2016, it looked like the estimated revenues earned by creators, U.S. creators in 2016 was $3.2 billion. And then Etsy was in second place with $1.4 billion. Instagram in third place with uh, $338 million. And then Amazon Publishing was number four with $230 million. WordPress was $208 million. Tumblr was $169 million. Twitch was $86 million. And eBay was 33 million. And when they're measuring eBay, they're just measuring the products that creators are making and selling, not just kind of like a lot of the drop ship type of things and stuff like that. So, and then if you look at the number of revenue earning creatives <clears throat> in the US, um, like, like and on YouTube, it's $3.2 billion spread out approximately across 1.8 million um, creative type of people and then etsy which is a is like half of that next big one 1.4 billion being split around 900,000. and then i find it interesting that then you have instagram there's only 300 or, or 538 million dollars being spread across 2.9 million but then you get to like we'll skip ahead to like wordpress where it has the most the biggest creative user base 4.7 million yeah and it's and it, and you got one of the measliest numbers two two hundred eight million being spread across a ton of people. So Carl and and uh, Jason, when you guys look at this graph here, 
what are your first impressions? What stands out to you? What comments do you think need to be made? What, uh, what's, what's going on as you, as you guys look at this chart? I guess with YouTube, uh, honestly, not surprised that it's the number one, uh, at least as of two years ago, the number one earner on here since it's been around, I'm, I, I can't say longer than uh, absolutely every one of these, but it's definitely been around uh, amongst the longest. And they've traditionally monetized so many people on there. And I mean, they built this up. And it's also, I guess, if you think about the different platforms, Etsy, you think of sort of as crafty, at least I did. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and Instagram, more of like brand or picture, well, obviously it's pictures. Uh, but YouTube is really spread uh, so many different uh, verticals there. And it's just, it's not surprising that you earn more money when you have uh, a bigger funnel to go in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the magic happens there in the ratios as well when you look at like the biggest number being 3.2 billion for youtube but then it's not the biggest number of creators and so the split is also more favorable for youtubers compared to the other platforms as well even though they might have maybe better services or better customer support i don't know whatever other features the other sites have youtube still has the best ratio for creators per ad revenue so yeah I don't know, it's kind of hard to compete with that. And I think part of that is just the, the ease of getting paid. Now, YouTube just changed all of that recently with their new policy update for new new partners and who they're taking on. But I think initially just creating a YouTube account and setting it up with AdSense to get paid is a lot easier than it would technically be through these other sources, you know. Yeah. Ultimately, WordPress, a lot of that's just AdSense revenue coming and presented mm -hmm. in a different way. So you're still talking about Google in a sense, but. Yeah, what, what I'm curious about is, is so uh, kind of what you were talking about, Carl, the ratios. Yeah, YouTube has a really good ratio, but so does Twitch. I mean, it's, it's pretty small, but it has the smallest user base uh, or, or, or revenue earning creatives at only 6,000. And again, this is 2016 data, so it's changed since then. But back then, the, the opportunity looked like it was kind of more on Twitch with $86 million to be split up between only 6,000 creators. Am I missing something there? Or are you guys like, shoot, I'm going to Twitch now? <laughs> or what? I, I don't know. I think, I think the... I think the reason a lot of people are afraid of Twitch and why it hasn't grown as much is that so far it's perceived as just a, a live stream only platform. And that's intimidating because you're talking about a different level of equipment, a different level. You have to just have faster internet connection. You have to have better equipment. You have to be good on camera live. You can't edit, you know, posts. And then the other thing where I've tried out Twitch a few times where I, I end up kind of ended up going back to YouTube is just that, like uh, you get you get going on Twitch and you, your content stays on there, but until you reach a certain level as a creator on Twitch, your content only stays there for a limited amount of time and then it disappears a little bit like a Vine video or a Snapchat would. So it, it you you post your live stream and then a month later it's gone. And I like to make money off of timeless content. If I produce a video that's funny for Halloween now, I want it to be funny for Halloween 10 years from now and people still watch it and mm -hmm. I still get those clicks and views as time goes on. So Twitch is a little bit more difficult that way, at least from my perspective. Yeah. I guess it's sort of active income versus passive income. With Twitch, you sort of got to be there active eight hours a day streaming, you know, if you want to really make it big on that. When on YouTube, you can, you know, build a catalog and uh, I mean, to keep growing, you need to usually still uh, keep creating. But if you have a, a back catalog that does well, you can definitely live off of that for quite a while also. Yeah. Uh, also, just one thing to note while you guys were talking, I was just looking. And Amazon uh, only bought Twitch in 2014. And if this data is 2016, uh, that was only a couple of years of the buildup. And I would imagine, you know, since then, the numbers are probably going to be a, a bit different there also now. Yeah. So uh, one of the other things that stands out to me when I look at this is looking at Amazon, $230 million divided around you know 239,000 creators. That's 
that's pretty good. I mean, in, ter- in terms, it's not as good as Twitch, but um, there's so many ex- creators who are going after Amazon affiliate revenue, mm-hmm. especially with like everything changing with um, you know the, a lot of the, the channels that don't aren't, who are no longer eligible for the partner program. A lot of them are going to affiliate marketing and things. You, would you guys like? overall generally that recommend that like that's a good place to go and a good place to start like maybe the pie isn't as big as youtube but hey you know what's the big deal just bump down four spots to like <laughs> a much smaller revenue bucket overall and tap in there or, or you guys like no just focus on other things or jason what would you recommend i want to hear from you too carl you bet so sorry i missed part of reading the chat. are you saying amazon just affiliate links or are you talking about putting video on the platform itself uh, oh, that's a good question. Those are two uh, I was thinking affiliates there. Uh, I would say if you're if in your videos you have any sort of product that you're I mean if you're I don't know reviewing uh, a camera or you know you're wearing some product or you know, if it's something that is relevant uh, in a product placement type thing even if you're not uh, promoting it specifically it doesn't hurt to have. Uh, and Amazon link in there. I don't see any reason not to do that. There's like almost zero effort. You just need to get the, you know, an actual URL to put in your description there. So I I think that part is really easy to do. Um, If you're talking about the video aspect of it, which I think is the more creative part, um, Mm -hmm. just the affiliate link is more like the drop uh, drop shipping you're talking about. Yeah, you're probably right. I probably misunderstood that, but Yeah. yeah, go ahead. The video part there, um, I honestly, I personally think that over, like Amazon's been uh, kind of a sleeping giant in that aspect. Uh, They have been sort of going at it with a couple of ways. With Twitch, they're kind of doing this with their IRL and sort of their video on demand platform. They've been building that up, but it's not widely used yet. And then with the Amazon video, as they're, you know, Google and Amazon are fighting over the Fire TVs and things like that, which are becoming more and more popular in homes. uh, They're working to get, I think, their prime video uh, really going too. So I, you know, these numbers are two years old, um, as this really wasn't even a thing back then. I think that, you know, as of right now, it's probably they're just getting into it. And I would honestly think that if Amazon wants to play in this space over the next couple of years, it's definitely going to be a player that has a lot of potential here. Yeah, we actually live streamed about that Amazon Tube thing. Um, those of you guys who are listening to the podcast recording of this, we we're also live streaming this at youtube.com slash video creators. And um, uh, a few people in the chat were kind of referring back to that Amazon Tube um, patent and trademark registration that surfaced a few weeks ago. I, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's, I, I have some friends who are, Um, publishing who are publishing on YouTube still are but they also now submit to Amazon Prime and are making around four times more through Amazon Prime um, video than they are through YouTube so (laughs) which we've talked about in the in the past and that actually might be a good consideration for your content Carl I don't know if you've considered that or not but um, I bet it I bet it yeah pretty well over there yeah, we've made a few exploratory attempts at Amazon and up till maybe recently it's been too clunky of a system. Yes. Uh, yes. You go out and try and upload and it's too ambiguous. There's not enough. Uh, it's not intuitive enough to be really viable to upload to regularly. And unless you, for me, from my perspective, already being full on you full time on YouTube, uh, I can't upload the same content. So I can't upload a video on YouTube. Amazon detects if I try to upload the same content over on their platform and doesn't allow it. So you have to have completely original content on both platforms, which is fine, but it's just so much easier and intuitive to upload to YouTube right now until Amazon Mm -hmm. fixes that. I think that's going to be a big hurdle for creators. It's too different. It feels too out of date still. They just need to revamp it. And I'm sure that they're working on that and they'll do some big reveal and launch, but it'll probably be riddled with problems too. I don't know. I I completely agree with you. The platform for the creator side of things is definitely not really ready yet, but they have the audience there, which is why I think they're the sleeping giant. Yeah. And and it's, yeah, it's interesting too. Sorry to interrupt there. It's interesting too, that Amazon does own Twitch. And so it'll be interesting to see how much 
information and knowledge that they got from that platform that they're going to be applying or bringing over, or if they're just going to expand Twitch to carry the Amazon tube. I'm not sure how they're planning on doing that, but yeah, I don't know if they know yet. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, we got some great questions I want to jump into from the chat, you know, about how we're using multiple platforms as creators ourselves and, um, you know, and, and the revenue split with YouTube and things like that. People are asking a lot of good questions before we jump into that though. I just want to thank you. Thank our sponsor again. If you guys aren't familiar with rev.com, you go check them out, go to rev.com slash video creators and get ten dollars off your um, you can sign up to get ten dollars off your first order and the reason i love them is because it's like easy pricing a dollar per minute 24 hour turnaround if your content is less than like 60 minutes long and it's like 99 percent accurate they're like actual humans doing this it's not like um text to speech or something like that this is or speech or the other way around i guess <laughs> this is uh like actual humans in north america canada uh, sitting there doing using it and from an SEO perspective is great because it gives Google more information about what your videos are, are about and it also um, most people who use captions are actually using it just to follow along with your content and so it increases the amount of audience retention that your videos get uh, which is increases the amount of watch time you get which increases how they rank um, and how they perf not rank but perform I should say overall across the uh, YouTube as a whole so definitely worth recommending it checking it out it's a service i use just go to rev.com slash video creators and you can sign up to get that ten dollars off your first order and just see if it's right for you or not i use i use uh, rev as well another thing that uh that's good about it is it's preventative measure for demonetization because the, the youtube's built-in closed captioning service a lot of times <laughs> interprets your words as being curse words or something <laughs> that you did not say true and story that, and and they read the algorithm reads through the closed captioning and if it looks like you're saying inappropriate words, then your video could get demonetized because of a mistake in the closed captioning. Uh, so we use the Rev service a lot of times uh, to prevent that as well on every yeah. single upload. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. I, I mean, you, and the thing I like too about it is it integrates with your YouTube channel. So like um, now you can submit it to captions beforehand, but you can just like browse, you can just log in the rev, link it to your YouTube channel, click all the videos on your YouTube channel. You want the captioned, they do it. And then they automatically publish those captions back to YouTube for you. So right. makes it really easy. So go check them out guys. Link down in the show notes down below. You guys can check them out. A couple good questions here um, for us. Let's see. Doesn't that Desi way online? Hey, three of you, are you mixing video and content together across these platforms? Or are you, uh, you know, Carl, you kind of mentioned this a little bit. You're kind of focused just on, on one you've attempted um, Amazon, but are there any other platforms that you are like really diving into and how you, how's that, What's your content strategy like? We we struggle with all of them except for YouTube. We uh, we do post uh, almost every day on Instagram and Twitter, but our reasons are a little bit different than some. Some people make more on like Instagram than they do their YouTube. It's just different for everybody, I think, and how you how you leverage each platform. For us, it's a matter of like uh, our AdSense revenue from the ads that pop up and everything, and the pre-roll ads on YouTube is is kind of like the main bulk uh, the the foundation of the revenue that we make as a family. But on top of that, you have a lot of sponsorships or brand deals that come in. Uh, so a company might want to sponsor a video of ours. And when they come and look at our YouTube channel, they also want to know like how much bang for our buck are we going to get if we have the Carl and Ginger family as opposed to this other family, the other defining factors in who's going to get that brand deal if they're only going to pick maybe five to 10 channels is your social outreach on the other platforms as well. So if you have a big YouTube channel, but a tiny Twitter following and a tiny Instagram following, they're going to say, well, maybe they don't have as much engagement with their audience mm -hmm. elsewhere. So if they're not clicking the links on YouTube to go follow them on Instagram, they're probably not going to click the link to go buy our product off of our website. And so there's kind of a, uh, you kind of have to have all of it. You have to have a presence somewhere. If you're not making money on Instagram, and you won't do it on YouTube, you still have to have Instagram and Twitter and a little bit of a Facebook presence just if you want your sponsorships to come through and to get more brand deals along the way. So they all kind of somehow symbiotically work together. But um, if you put a lot of emphasis on Instagram, a lot of, uh, they're, they're rolling out a lot of 
um, advertising packages and their sponsorships just for Instagram and, and Twitter as well. I haven't really come across a single Twitter only based sponsorship or brand deal or ad posts really yet. Nothing's come across our table that way. It's always been kind of piggybacked on top of YouTube, but I have seen that for, for Instagram. Yeah. I think historically there were a lot of Twitter ads like years in the past, but they didn't really do so well. And people have moved on to some of the more engaging platforms. Uh, though I, I'd say for Social Blade, we utilize our Twitter a lot, but not really in a way to sell anything or advertise on there. It's more of a way to interact with people quickly on there. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, I've been missing some super chats here. Let me just do them real quick and then we'll move on to the next question here. Um, Green Shorts. Hey, Tom, thank you so much for the $5. Congrats on 10 years of Social Blade. Thank you for you, thank Jason. You. But it yeah. gave me the money, so. <laughs> I guess I owe Jason a coffee or something. <laughs> do you even drink coffee? I don't think so. Oh, there you go. There's the Starbucks. <laughs> I tried it once, like in 2001, yeah. and it tasted like burnt water. And I was like, yeah, got like, yeah. Yeah. It too. I actually prefer Duncan, but I had this delivered as we were just starting the show. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, like, I don't feel like acquiring that taste. It takes, takes too much money. Uh, a gypsy's Kiss, $10. Tim, what application are you using to get the three-way conversation plus chat window? Um, thank you. Uh, we're just, I'm just doing this through uh, Wirecast. So um, I'm just bringing, they have a feature now you can bring in other people. My first time to use it successfully, to be honest. I've had lots of problems with it. So this is the first time to use it successfully to have um, Jason and Carl here, which is awesome. And then thank you, Psycho Traveler. I don't know what 1,000 you, um, I'm guessing that's around the $2 range given that it's green. But just sending some love and a big thanks, Tim. Your channel is just incredible for up and coming YouTube creators. Don't stop. Well, we'll try our best not to. So thank you guys for your support. Keep supporting it. We can keep going. This is awesome. Is that those are, are those super chat donations? Is that what I'm seeing over here? Yeah, you can send awesome. me one if See you that, want. That's <laughs> another kidding. example of how, how YouTube is YouTube is on the forefront on, on these types of features now, which gives them advantage. So you have these other platforms that we've been talking about as a viable stream of income, but it's like they're still just trying to make it so that you can actually upload and have it work. Yeah. And YouTube is pushing these boundaries of like super chat and live stream and 360 live stream and all these other, they're in another world that these other platforms are racing to try and keep up with. So I think that's going to be a big defining factor. Even if the money's better, like on Facebook, if it sucks to try and upload there and it's like takes twice as long or 10 times longer to get a video up and then people just immediately rip it off and re-upload it everywhere and there's no content control or anything like that, people are going to avoid it. Yeah. It's just a natural consequence. So. I, I think one of the things to keep in mind here, which I say, you guys who are <clears throat> familiar with the stream and the podcast have heard me say this before, but like YouTube's pioneering some things that have never been done before. Like no one right. has ever made this big of a platform with billions of users across all the world with different internet connections and different devices and like, and trying to pay people so that they can continue to you know build their communities. Like it's a huge feat. And you gotta take the copyright stuff into consideration like Carl said, it's just crazy. So yes, they're not gonna get it all right, but right. they got some things right. And Twitch is close though. Twitch is very close. Like uh, you know, a couple of people in the chat are pointing out that the Twitch has had a feature similar to Super Chat before YouTube. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like they're feeding off each other for ideas. And so. Twitch lets you sponsor someone that gives part of your your parents presumably prime uh, uh, the fee that they pay for Amazon Prime, then goes to you know the the, the creator they want to sponsor on Twitch, which is coming to YouTube. They're currently beta testing sponsorships. Uh, with you outside gaming of, channel, you can do outside it. the gaming channel. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. beta, they're beta testing it outside with a few. I was not able to get in on that beta, but I tried, <laughs> and uh, which I think is like exclusive content, especially emojis for you guys who are in the chat and things like that. And um, yeah, wow, we're getting a bunch of super chats now. Look what happens when you start talk about super we're chats. Start talking about <laughs> <Woo! it. laughs> the chats is lit Boy, up. That's so, super chat, Tim. Wow. <laughs> uh, so this so Tom. Crazy. Green source, five dollars. Thank you, a friend, Joe Scott. And we're gonna get back to the rest of your questions. I want to get back on topic here, but I also want to hit yeah. the, the super chat here. 
Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, $5. Uh, Joe Scott, as I know Joe, Joe, he went through Video Labs, and I think he only had, he had less than 1,000 subscribers when he went through my Video Labs course um, with Tom, who's doing this super chat. Uh, so, Joe, he out, so now he has 100,000 subs. Joe Scott, um, he's saying here in the, in the comment, did a live stream and made nearly $1,000 via super chat in a one hour live stream. My, that is a lot. I, my record I've ever seen is 4,000 in one hour. And it was, um, you guys knew Clintus is Clintus, right? TV. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm assuming they were, a lot of those got blocked when the parents got hold of their credit card statement. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, and then Louis, the Beagle, tw thank you so much for the $20. You guys are awesome. You guys are doing a really good job. Did help me out a lot. Social Blade, I'm number five now from Belgium. Over 13 million views this month and growing fast. Crazy. Thanks for the help. Awesome. Um, and then the Playhouse, big fan of Social Blade here is an upgrade to a beer. I guess <laughs> I owe you a coffee and a beer now. <laughs> so VidCon, he's going to be very hydrated. <laughs> comes around. Um, Vissily, hey Tim, want to thank you for the valuable info you've been sharing with us. Went from 600 subs to 7,000 in less than two months. Thanks to your free videos, made you provide tremendous value. Thank you kindly, and thank you. Yes, you're welcome for the twenty dollars and giving back some value to me, so I can continue to give value to you guys. You guys are awesome. Wow. Okay. So yes, the Carl's Point Super Chat is a thing. There's another way that YouTube's pioneering thing stuff um but let's talk about this i think sam stunts has a good question here it says youtube hates creators because they take half their money <laughs> do they hate cre what, do, what do how do you guys react to that uh, they don't hate creators they need to pay for the platform also is really i think what it comes down to <laughs> yeah the creators are the ones that bring the views that create the platform for the ads to play on to begin with so without the creators there is no youtube so i don't think they hate the creators i think youtube is in a pickle where they have to try and keep both sides happy and both side both sides are blaming the other side for any time of, there's a problem or a drop in revenue or anything like that the creators get upset at the advertiser at youtube saying that they favor the advertisers and the advertisers are mad at youtube thinking that it's the creators fault by producing content that they don't want to put their ads on so it goes both ways i think it uh i i i think youtube wishes that creators had more advertiser friendly content across the board but other than that I, uh, they've been pretty good to deal with whenever i've had a problem but i have pretty family friendly content so i've never really run into too much i think what it comes down to at the end of the day youtube doesn't hate anyone they just want to make sure they get paid also and they can run the site i would rather them focus more on the advertisers and the creators to be honest because i've i can kind of take care of myself like i can figure things out i can adapt i can change but I want the revenue source that's coming in. Like people forget, like they get mad at YouTube for this when they forget it's a revenue split. Like if you're not making money, YouTube's not making money, right? So if they took money, it's not like YouTube's not paying you or just taking money away from you. They're taking money away from themselves too. So I, I, I would rather them make like, the advertising thing as awesome as possible. Yeah, don't forget about us as creators, and I don't think they will. But like, I think for the long term sustainability, I think like I would personally like. I think they're doing a pretty good job. I think they should focus on that. The, the one thing, the one thing I, I will just say on the topic that is not exactly critical of YouTube. Like, you can't blame them on here, but this is where I think creators will sometimes feel like they're not being. Uh, treated fairly is that you got to think that YouTube is a business though also and at the end of the day their primary goal is to have the most revenue coming through the platform in general and that might mean at the expense of some of the smaller ones not making as much to get the bigger ones to be able to make more so that's whenever they change the algorithm it's not because they hate anyone it's specifically because they think that it's going to bring platform in general more revenue through yeah um so lemonade mom asked a good question here uh good to see you by the way uh, she was also in video labs uh the one here in cincinnati would you recommend working on all social media and trying to spread yourself out or just focus all your time and effort on one platform you got all these platforms they all like want to pay you and get you to their platforms what would you, what would you guys do I think you have to prioritize. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I, uh, you can't neglect the other ones, 
but you do have to pick and choose. Me personally, I only seem to be able to, to focus on effectively maybe three, four platforms maximum all at once. And usually like I'll, I'll create the content, I'll, we'll, we'll come up with the idea for a video. And I know that the priority for that is how it's going to perform on YouTube. And then I'll repackage or repurpose that content or promote that content on Twitter and Instagram. But lately we're separating a lot where our Instagram posts don't necessarily reflect our YouTube posts, but that's because they've, uh, they've introduced the Instagram stories. And so we use that to promote the video so it fades and it's not just sitting there. And I don't, know. I, I, I don't think you can neglect any of them because they're all um, interconnected and, 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 if you the ones that you neglect, you're going to pay for it later. And what I mean by that is when your channel reaches a certain point, once you pass like a million subscribers and you start to get looked at by the bigger brands and the bigger sponsorships, those other platforms become a lot more important uh, when they come and look at your channel. Like I said earlier, if they look and they say, wow, they have you know 1.5 million subscribers on their YouTube channel, but they only have maybe, you know, 1200 followers on Twitter, eh, maybe they don't have the reach that we thought they had. And, and so they'll, they'll, they might steer clear of you or think there's that you're paying for subscribers or something like that. So you can't neglect them all, but you have to pick your best chances for success and make yeah. sure that you take care of that first as your main priority. I agree with you. Uh, to summarize, I guess, focus on what's working for you and what you're good at, but get your foot in the door and other ones. And if, I'll silently promote them with links in your description, you know, things yep. like that. Yep. Um, so one of the things on this chart, and I have like, I want to, um, a few other stories to talk to you guys about real quick here. Um, as we kind of wrap this up, but, uh, Instagram's number three where it's like, okay, I get how you make money on YouTube and Etsy and Amazon, some, you know, Twitter. but Instagram, how do 2.9 million creators, earn 538 million dollars um what how do you make money on instagram and that's what old sneelox workshop is asking monetizing instagram how do you do that <laughs> is that just brand deals or is there other stuff going on here too that's i'd say at least from what i've seen that's primarily the way to do it they're sponsored content brand deals brand integration adding as an add-on to a youtube video that type of a thing also but yeah they, they, they've just recently added a new feature I've noticed in the last couple of months. I'm not sure. I might be wrong on this uh, as to when they turn this on. But there is a new feature now to where you have an Instagram post or picture that features particular products. Um, you can click on it. It actually pops up and shows you the price and a clickable on-screen link on the mobile devices to actually go buy that product. So, like if I'm wearing a cool pair of shoes in a video and I have an affiliate link through Instagram, they can just click on their phone and a little number pops up showing uh, how much my shoes cost and where to go get them. They can click that and it'll take them right to my website where they can buy those shoes. So I think they're innovating some new on-screen clickable stuff. Uh, that's one of the advantages of having still photos as opposed to like a moving video. But, you know, YouTube does have the have the i cards and uh they used to have the annotations on screen annotations and they might be regretting that now because they could have rehashed that into clickable outbound links for affiliate links and things that they could make money off of but instagram's coming out with some new ways to do that but mostly i think it's just the sponsorship packages and people paying for you to do a specific post for their company's product is yeah. the easiest way to do it on instagram yep I'd say one way that Instagram is uh, valuable also to brands is that it obviously through video you can be a lot more compelling and do a lot more to sell it. But there's also when you're dealing with people that are busy, they don't necessarily have time to watch as many long videos that might uh, catalog that when people can still scroll through their Instagram feed and, uh, you know, make a quick sale on that there. Yeah, yeah. Let me point you guys to two other things here. Um, so there's links in the show notes. You guys can check these out. I know some of you guys who are smaller creators are like, but I've been working so hard and I have like $80 in my AdSense account and now I'm just going to lose it. Well, there's a link down there that says you how you can get 
paid your AdSense balance and to summarize it, um, the options aren't that, aren't that awesome to be honest. <laughs> you can shut down your AdSense account and when you shut it down, they will pay you the balance um, or you can keep it active and, and wait till you reach your thresholds and then start earning again at that point. So, and there's a little more information down there in that, but uh, if it was me, I would be like, you know what? Things that are worth having in life just take hard work. So it's worth, it's worth going after. And then this other article, again, also related to money is YouTube is expanding YouTube red to more countries. It doesn't say when, but they have a hundred countries kind of coming up next where they're going to expand the subscription service to, according to Susan Wojcicki, YouTube's chief executive officer. And uh, I'm excited about that because um, I think I love YouTube Red. I've been, I signed up like like two hours after it became available in the U.S. Um, I did not stay up for it, but I happened to wake up and I'm like, oh, it's after midnight Pacific time, which was like five. It's a 3 a.m. my time. So um, and I've had it ever since. And I just love it. I think it's absolutely worth it. But what a lot of people don't realize is like that is also a revenue split with YouTube and creators and that um, that revenue split the 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 is it the forty they get the fifty five percent split right the five dollars and fifty cents of the ten dollars goes to whoever you happen to watch on YouTube that month it gets split based amount on the amount of watch time you're spending watching creators so if you really want to support your favorite creators get YouTube Red and that pays on average you know like. I forget the exact map, but it was at, um, it's a higher percentage per yeah, view for it, YouTube red views compared it was to like just 20 other times views higher. A lot. Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Like 20 times higher. If Which I is funny because way. when they first started announcing YouTube red, all the creators were freaking out. Like it was going to mess everything up or that mm-hmm. their money was going to go down. And it didn't, it's actually been a good thing. Some rudimentary math. Like you'd have to watch a lot of YouTube all day long to divide that 550 down to right. like fractions of a penny, like where your view, your watch time is worth fractions of a penny, like an ad is now. It's like, geez. Uh, so um, if it's not coming to your country, it's coming soon. And if you do have YouTube Red, thank you for supporting creators and YouTube, honestly. Like we all want to support this platform as well. But then you also get like the music subscription, which I actually use more than I thought I would. Um, and just removing ads from YouTube is like makes it an actual like enjoyable experience now. It's like it looks clean and fresh. So I'm not <laughs> sponsored. I'm just saying youtube.com slash red is where you go <laughs> to get that. Um, and uh, so I actually there's a lot of other stories that I want to I kind of want to go over here that we don't have time for every week. And you guys know um, those of you who are patrons, I will share those links in a, in a private patron posts over there for you guys where we'll dig in more into some of the big stories that happened um, this week. I'm just kind of pulling some of them up. Um, oh, yeah, some safety stuff. And um, there's an article about how someone cracked Facebook views on with Facebook video. So if you want to know kind of like how to they, – they were at the top of everyone's feed for 12 days in a row. <laughs> So after the algorithm switch, someone figured out how to kind of take advantage of it. <laughs> uh, so that article is there and um, there's YouTube's removing some demographic information from YouTube analytics. So J- Jason probably knows all about that as like the not happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all about data. So whenever they remove things, not thrilled. Um, speaking of Instagram, there's like an upcoming reshare um, feature that they are testing right now and Twitch chat rooms and new music added to the YouTube creator library. All that kind of stuff goes for patrons. It only costs like a buck. So um, I just thank you guys for your support and enabling me to be able to support you guys the best that I can. So we can hang out live here every Monday. And if you are listening to the replay of this or the live stream, or I'm sorry, the podcast recording every Tuesday on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify. I feel like I always miss one, but there's just a lot of them. Just search for video creators and you'll find it and keep up with all the, the news and YouTube tips and listen to great people like Carl and Jason. So you guys can check them out, socialblade.com or youtube.com slash Carl and Ginger. Is that? Uh, right? They should probably find it that way. Yeah, easy. Okay, yeah. just search for it. If you want some fun, family, crazy, or 
Orbeez type of, uh, are you still doing the Orbeez thing or is it? We just did yesterday. Yeah. We actually, we can't get away from it. It keeps coming up in the suggested trending traffic. And so we're like, all right, we'll do another one. I kind of want to ask how much money you've invested in the Orbeez so far, but I'll ask that (laughs) privately. (laughs) We get the, we get the knockoff brand off of Amazon. We just don't show the packaging. Oh, there you go. A little insider trick there for you. So um, patreon.com slash video creators. We'd love to have you join our awesome community over there. Subscribe if this is your first time here. And we'll see you guys again next week for another video creators live stream podcast episode thing. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Bye.